Welcome to Chai Brews, your go-to podcast for all things AI at the University of Tennessee at Chattanooga. I'm your host, Daniel Duggan, with a bachelor's in computer science pursuing a master's in computer science. In each episode, we'll talk about the ways AI is revolutionizing education. We'll explore how AI is transforming teaching, learning, and our community. Whether you're a student, an educator, or simply curious about the future of learning, this podcast is for you. In this episode, I talked to Vicki Farnsworth. Vicki is the Vice Chancellor and Chief Information Officer at UTC, and she is leading the AI programs here. I asked her how our AI platforms will be chosen. I think that students are going to drive the projects, like computer science students such as yourself are going to drive some of the platforms that we have to use because they want to do things like build applications. There are faculty members in communications that want to use chatbots around critical marketing and communications, and and those are great, great ways to use AI um, to get to an answer much more quickly. There are simple ways of using AI in administration Uh, We're seeing a lot coming out in the PR space. How do you edit images much more quickly? Um, There's still a lot of manual effort in processing transcripts as students come into the university, whether that be uh, an adult learner or someone who stopped out. So that is a perfect use of AI to pull the data off of a transcript and then teach it what UTC is looking for, right? And we can automate that process. So I think that there'll be some real administrative efficiencies we can find using artificial intelligence as we're bringing together faculty. With, you know, with faculty, it's really more about telling their story and how they're using it. And we've been pleasantly surprised, Daniel, with some of the work that you've done interviewing faculty. I've been so like pleasantly surprised in how they're using it and finding creative ways. And so on the faculty side, to me, it's telling the story and getting it out there and getting the community to hear it because it will it will spur good ideas on their side as well. Um, But on the administrative side, we're really going to have some things that we have to deliver. And so it'll be the question of, do we go after that in an already developed application? Or is this one that we think that we could develop um, long term and end up saving ourselves some money? So you kind of said that students would be kind of the driving factor for some of our professors. Do you want to touch on the UTverse platform that we've seen and worked with a little bit? Yeah, so UTverse is um, it's based in a Microsoft uh, solution set coming out of the UT system. They thought it was, you know, it, it's a really great idea to protect our data. And so UTverse, it looks like a, a chat platform, but it's much safer for a faculty member to run a research proposal through that solution because it keeps their intellectual property contained to UT. So I think it's a really great environment that students and faculty and staff can use for the general student would be fine. Like it, it's a good way to um, help devise an outline or get information on a specific topic. Um, what it won't do well is I'm going to write an application and use the data behind. I'm going to API into chat GPT um, and, and be able to be really flexible. So I think some CS students will drive us to a more flexible platform. So they can develop applications. And it may not just be CS, right? They're going to go there first, but pretty soon we'll see English majors that want to do things in a a much more flexible way. Have you seen any faculty kind of be against some of the things we're trying to do and some of the things we propose doing? Yeah, there's still a real concern that if I let students use AI to, to do homework or on tests, um, you know, there's still a real faculty concern that they're not going to get to the outcomes that I need them to get to because I, I know I know I can get them to the outcomes knowing this traditional way. Mm-hmm. And so I think bringing in speakers and people who think this way might be a good way to expose faculty who are really apprehensive to different ways to get to ensure that the students are learning what they want them to learn it's this, it's going to be the social sciences, right? And they're going to be the ones that think about responsible AI and are is the AI and the data provided by it really being responsible to the community as a whole. I know we've kind of worked on an AI introductory course that teaches students prompt engineering, so how to ask it a question properly. That way you get the desired outcome, not just saying, all right, here's this, and not really getting the answer you want. Do you want to talk about where that's at and what all we have left to do. 
um, one of the things we have to be really thoughtful about is, you know, there are a couple of units on campus, Rollins College of Business being one of them, that's working on an AI 101 course to introduce it to at least Rollins students. So we want to make sure that we're not overlapping too much with, with the work going on in that space. And so um, I'm always wary, since the content we're looking at for prompt engineering hasn't been developed at UTC, we want to make sure that our UTC faculty are comfortable with us heading in that direction. You know, the the conversations that would be had outside of prompt engineering would be either exposing students to different ways of using it in, in different um, in different areas like nursing or, you know, medical or, or um, in HR, it would be exposing students to that or exposing them to how local companies are doing it. So I do see this course as being um, uh, having a local aspect to Chattanooga and, and how AI is, is being used in this area specifically. For incoming students, maybe their parents, how would you address some of the concerns they may have with high schools being a little more restrictive on AI and saying, no, like we're not using that at all? to kind of going into a whole new chapter of life, having access to a tool that's kind of this powerful and all the things that come with it? You know, I think the best way to go after that, and it's kind of the long-term vision, right, is we, we're engaging with Hamilton County Schools. And if we can tell good stories and be able to convince them that blocking it isn't the right way to go, but learning how to use it is, and we can be part of that effort, with them, um, we've engaged with the with PEF, the Public Education Foundation, on how they want to use AI to map out students' pathways, um, and then how do we take that in from higher ed and continue that mapping? Right. So that's a great partnership. To kind of go back to the curriculum we've been working on a little bit, it's a little more general and just what AI is, what prompt engineering is. Could you see that being integrated into? Maybe some of the dual enrollment high schools offer that way. Students already are somewhat aware. Can I use AI? Can I not use it? How do I use it if I can? I think it totally can. I think if we do that course in the right way, um, it, as we do in- engagement, we'll do engagement with, for our faculty on campus. We'll do engagement for students. We'll do engagement for staff. And then we'll also do engagement for the community. But last but not least of that would be engaging with Hamilton County as they're doing professional development for their teachers, right? So if we can teach their teachers, then, you know, we're helping ourselves long-term because we provide advanced education to teachers. And for kind of the community events we've talked about a little bit, would you say that's a good thing for maybe students to go to as well and attend just to kind of see what's going on? As we have broader conversations in the community, I think students, it would be great for students to join for a couple of reasons. Students can hear what problems the community is trying to solve, and then the students can also either bring that back to the classroom here or take that on as a way of helping themselves get a job, right? So um, I think that there there's definitely a lot of opportunities to, to connect this and connect students with the community. Um, and, you know, it, a student that goes into an internship and can use AI in a, in a very robust way will be able to add to the, to the company that they're working for, and then that would build them probably a long-term reputation with that company. Or how would you factor in their ability to use it, not over-rely on it, but just kind of to enhance their workflow and kind of your take on that? Um, this is really going to be the differentiator. Like AI is headed into this it's going to separate the haves and the have-nots. Um, we're seeing articles about how research and higher ed is being left out of the building of these giant models, and the funding is all going. It's it's all going to or being used by these large tech companies, and this has really never happened before. So I think we're going to see because of the costs associated and the processing power that it takes to do this, we're going to see this really be a differentiator of the haves and the have-nots from a higher ed perspective and beyond. And kind of one last question, what do you really want to accomplish here at UTC with RAI initiative? You know, I feel, and when we came up with the name for the, the effort and Chai became it, Chattanooga AI, that's really what the goal is, right? Like it it just brings this image of a cup of tea, right? It's it's everyone getting together 
um, in a non, non-stressful way. And it, it really is about bringing the technology and this new thing to meet people where they are at their comfortability level, whether it's I'm a student from another country and I want to run this email to my professor through AI to make sure I'm saying what I think I'm saying. Um, I think it's those kind of opportunities. And so it it's about telling the story of the faculty, getting the community and students comfortable with where we are. I think those, to me, are the overall goals. I think we will find some efficiencies and we'll bring people along with us. I think that, to me, would be the overall goal. That was Vicki Farnsworth, Vice Chancellor and Chief Information Officer here at UTC. And I'm Daniel Duggan. Thanks for tuning in. The music in this podcast is by Blue Dot Sessions. Don't forget to subscribe to our podcast. And until next time, keep learning and exploring the possibilities of AI.